Welcome to First Baptist Church this morning. You may be seated. I'm Pastor Jared, and it's a, a, an honor to be able to welcome you to our worship service this morning. If you are a, a first-time guest or returning guest, then uh, uh, we've got inside your bulletin, you can find a connection card uh, on the inside there for you to tear off. If you want to just go ahead and uh, uh, fill that out with your name and uh, address, some information so we can record your visit. And also, if you are a regular attender or a member and you've got any updates to any information, maybe you're not on our email address, uh, email list, we send out an email at least weekly of a, a digital bulletin to help you keep a reminder of announcements and things that are going on that we, that we sometimes are, are talking about here personally, and sometimes we just communicate it through the email system. But uh, also prayer needs and things like that that happen throughout the week, we send that email um, out as we have urgent prayer requests from people in our church. So if you want to subscribe to that, th that communication card is how you can keep up to date information with us. You can also share any prayer requests or needs that you have for us to be able to serve and minister to you. So um, let me give you one update here at the beginning of the service, one announcement that we're going to be uh, focusing on today, and then we'll circle back, and I've got a few announcements this, uh, at the end of the service that we'll close, w close with. But we've got Operation Christmas Child this year again, and we're happy to be able to partner with Samaritan's Purse. And I've, got, uh, I've, I've made a commitment to the local Samaritan Purse organization that our church will be able to do 25 of these boxes. And so um, there are boxes back there. We've got uh, 25 in. And so if you could help us out, the, the, the only thing that's pressing right now is time. And so we have one week to gather the items and to bring it back um, uh, just because of the way uh, the, the late start into it. But nonetheless, we're not going to let that stop us from being able to minister and spread the gospel. So if you are able to help us out, um, you can grab a box or two, maybe your Sunday school class, or maybe it's a, a, a neighbors in your, in your community that you know 
would be charitable and want to give, grab a box or two for your family, let the kids go shopping uh, this week, or whatever, uh, however you can help us out. Inside the boxes back there is some material which tells you information about it. There's a, a, a little pamphlet that tells you um, the process and what you can and what you cannot pack. Uh, some gift ideas. They, they suggest buying at least one wow item. Maybe it's a stuffed animal, uh, a baby doll, whatever it is. You're going to have to mark it for a boy or a girl box. And then uh, um, there's also things that they say do not include. So no candy, no toothpaste, gum, things like that. Uh, um, you know, used items, damaged items. We're purchasing new gifts and we want to be a blessing and spread the gospel. Remember, Samaritan's Purse is going to go and deliver these to children around the world. And the great thing about the way they've got it set up is you're able to follow your box. So for $9, um, and the church will cover that, but if you are able to, you can give towards it. That's how we do it every year. And throughout the year, we've received designated offerings toward this project. And so this year, they have a stick-on label. So you can just fill out your information. This is for this age child, and this is for a boy or a girl. And then you place that label on the box. And then you're able to actually track where your box went with that QR code, or you can, if you've got a, a phone, that you can just scan that with your smartphone, or you can go to their website and just type in the numbers that are right there on your label. So you'll be able to follow where it went. Um, we're just asking you, um, if you're going to participate in wanting to track your box, bring that offering next week, or you can uh, put it in the envelope and designate, you know, that nine dollars for uh, Operation Christmas Child. The church will actually, next Sunday, will gather all of them and make one purchase uh, for the shipping of our boxes that we're sending. So you don't have to individually go and enter your credit card and do all that information through their website, although it gives that information there. Just disregard that part of it. You can keep the tracking for your own purposes. We're going to go ahead and enter all of that information and make one transaction from our designated funds to the Samaritan's Purse organization and so that will uh, be a, a great help. So anyway, there's a packing list and things like that, so make sure you've packed it in order. Just follow those instructions, and then, again, make sure that you don't purchase any of the items that they say to exclude and make sure not to get. We want to be as much of a blessing to them, and we don't want it to be infested with bugs or other issues um, that they get through exporting uh, through the customs process and things that they have to go through. So they've got reasons for that. The last thing is inside each of those boxes is a bookmark. You can keep that bookmark. It's a prayer reminder and a request for, for us to pray over this project and for each of the people who will be receiving it. So it, uh, it gives you some, uh, some things, uh, items to pray for. And so that can just be taken and put it in your, book, in your Bible or uh, where you have prayer cards and things like that and pray over that. But thank you for participating. If you've got any questions, you can uh, ask me uh, at any point uh, throughout the week. We will be uh, uh, gathering these this week, so please bring it back next week, um, and then we will process and take care of that. The following Monday, we'll be taking it to our local drop-off spot down in Venice. So anyway, thank you for, uh, for your help with that. Uh, a, big, a big project that we're trying to you know, cram in as fast as we can, but we appreciate your help and, and willingness to give. I know several people have talked to us about that, and we wanted to certainly make that available. So may God bless you all. Enjoy the service today. I'm going to go ahead and, and open us in a word of prayer, and then we'll continue with our worship service. But God, we love you. We thank you for this day, and we thank you that we uh, live in a country, in a place where we're able to gather freely and worship you, lift up your name and spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. So today I pray over this service for those who are gathered here together, for the musicians, the singers, Lord, that you would anoint this service with the Holy Spirit's power, God. And I pray for our pastor as he brings the message from your word, God, that you would speak to our hearts, convict us, and help us to leave this place challenged and changed and ready to impact the world for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing.
And so here's what I want you to realize. The direction of your life, the path that you are taking, will determine whether God is behind you scooting you along or God is in front of you and pushing you back. That's what the Bible says in this passage. He says God gives grace, He's scooting you along, to the humble, but He resists the proud. And so here's what He's telling us. Your direction is important. So today, I want to encourage you, we're going to start talking about uh, uh, our Christian walk a lot more specifically in terms of what is the next step that I could take today. And I'm going to encourage you with this today. The next step that all of us can take is one towards Christ. You say, well, what do you mean by that, Pastor? So if yesterday, <clears throat> if yesterday you were living in wickedness and sin and, and maybe you were Maybe you were gossiping, or maybe you were uh, lying, or maybe you were cheating, or maybe you were, uh, if we had kids in here, Mariah would be yelling out, maybe you murdered someone, right? Maybe you murdered someone yesterday, right? That's the extreme. Today, I'm going to walk towards Christ, right? And what does that look like? Because the Bible says this, draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. So here's the next step. Haven't read your Bible in a while? Read it today. Isn't that pretty easy? Man, that's about the easiest next step I can imagine giving you. Read your Bible. Haven't prayed in a while? Pray. You say, well, I do read my Bible and I do pray. All right. So now let's get a little deeper. As you pray, ask God to show you things that you need to change. Now, I'm going to warn you, that's never an easy prayer. Because he's going to bring things up to your mind that you think, I didn't even think that was wrong. I didn't even know I was doing anything. So he's going to convict you of things that could draw you closer to Him and make you more effective for His kingdom. So the next step that I want to encourage you to take today is one towards Christ. Regardless of whether you've been a Christian for 50 years or for 50 seconds, direction is far more important than location. Which way are you headed? Next thing we have to see out of this passage is this, <clears throat> that not only the path you're on leads to the Christian you'll be, uh, the second thing he tells us here is that when we submit to God, that's yielding to his will, he's going to push us along, right? This whole passage, he repeats that multiple times, in fact. And that same theme is the whole theme of what James is trying to tell us here and what he's really trying to get across, right? Like, so, so I coach basketball, and, and the kids at the start of the season think I'm just mean, right? They think I just do things because I'm sadistic, and I like to watch them run, and I, I want to see how many of them I can make throw up before the end of practice. And, and the reality is they might be partially right in some of that, right? You can ask Emma. She has accused me of that recently. But what they start to realize about halfway through the season is the things that I'm telling them to do are for their benefit. And they start to realize the reason that coach makes me run when we miss layups is because it's a lot of fun to score points and win games. 
The reason that we have to run when we miss free throws is it's a lot of fun to hit free throws instead of miss them. The reason that we have to be disciplined early on is because it's for our own benefit. Now, here's what I want you to understand. Here's what James is saying in this passage. If you will follow Christ, it may seem difficult at first, but you'll be blessed for it. If you will turn to Christ, if you will submit to Christ, if you will yield to Christ, number one, if you've never been saved, that's the first step. But if you're a Christian and there are parts of your life that you are grasping and saying, this is mine, I don't want to give it up. If you will yield that to Christ, he has intentions to bless it. He has intentions to use it. And what James is trying to say here is, God doesn't want to slow you down. He's only going to slow you down if you're fighting against him. If you're resisting him, he's going to resist you. If you yield to him, he's going to give you grace. He's going to make you more successful than you could have been. Now, now some of you just heard me say you'll be a millionaire if you follow Christ. That's not what I said. <laughs> if that was the case, I'm doing it wrong. I'll just say that off right off the bat. But I will say this. I couldn't have figured out how to use basketball to reach three kids for Christ. He figured it out when I submitted it to him. I don't know how God wants to use your artistic ability or your musical talent or your, 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 your math brain or your uh, business acumen. I don't know how God wants to use that for his glory, but I do know if you'll yield it to him, he's got a plan for it because that's why he gave it to you in the first place. Right? How foolish are we to think that God gave us skills and abilities just to entertain ourselves? No, not at all. He gave you those abilities for his purpose and his plan. He's just waiting for you to give them back to him. So that's what he said. Submit to God. Yield your will to his. <clears throat> Next thing he says is resist the devil. We see that in verse 8. So he says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners. Uh, cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. I missed it here. Hang on. Verse 7. Therefore, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. It's in verse 7, not verse 8. I apologize. Submit to God. Yield your will to his. Resist the devil. Don't give anything over to him. Now, I'm going to give you a real clear example. God, God kind of showed this to me. So if, if you drove here from north on 41, you got to experience the moment of decision, right? The moment of decision comes roughly at the light where Macintosh meets 41. And the two lanes going 55 miles an hour go down to one lane. Right? And it, it should be simple. Yielding should be easy. If you're in the left lane, you yield to the right lane. You work together as a team, and everything goes smoothly. That's how it works, isn't it? If you've driven down here, that's not how it works. Here's how it works. Young guy in his 20s goes 75 miles an hour in the left lane and passes everybody. Middle-aged guy in big work truck gets annoyed and drives in both lanes for three miles all the way down 41 and everybody honks at him until another young guy flies around him on the left lane and causes some kind of accident. That's basically every day on this road right here. Now Sunday's easier, praise the Lord, but weekdays, buckle up, literally, I mean it, buckle up, you need, to, <laughs> you need a seatbelt when you're passing here. But here's why. Some people yield. Right? You catch that in this passage? Submit. Yield to God. And he'll give you grace. Right? Humble yourselves. Slow down. Don't be just about yourself. Think about what's going on. And willingly give up your right to go. That's what yield means, right? You're yielding the right of way. I'm giving you the ability to go instead of me. That's yielding, right? Everybody, everybody, we're clear on that. We all took driver's ed. We know what we're supposed to do when you see that big triangle sign. But then there's others that resist, right? Have you ever seen anybody resist yielding? The merge, like, uh, and you can do it from either lane, right? The, the, the resist sometimes looks like I'm going to get right on the bumper of the person in front of me I'm going to tell you, if I'm guilty of one or the other, it's more likely the right lane. You stayed over there. You should have known better. 
You, you knew back then. I saw the sign too. I yielded a long time ago. It's your turn to yield now. I'm not yielding you. That's called resist, right? Yield. Now, now let me be clear. This is traffic 101. The person in the right lane is in the right to keep going because they've already yielded. Right? <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe I should get off this topic before I create enemies instead of friends, right? But here's what I want you to see biblically, okay? I want you to catch what he's saying in this passage. Resist the devil. Want to know how we can resist the devil? Okay, it's very similar to how you resist the merge. Get real close to Christ. Think about that. If you get bumper to bumper with Christ, ain't no room for the devil to get in there, right? He might, he'll have to knock you over to get in there. Do you see, you see what I'm saying? I hope that this is as powerful for you as it has been for me this week to realize I am in the right if I'm resisting what the devil's trying to do. You know what the devil's going to try to do? He's going to try to convince you that the depression or the anxiety or the frustration that you face is because of some, in some way, you've given God too much. And now you've got to focus on you. You know what the, how the world says that? You know, look out for number one. Want to know a surefire way to depression and anxiety and suicidal thoughts? Only think of yourself. That's how you get there. So that's what the devil says. You know what we're supposed to do? Resist. Get right on God's bumper, right? Get right up there. And, and you know what? Even, even just block him out. Listen, you're not getting in here, devil. I refuse to let you merge into my life. Do you see what I'm trying to show you here? Resist the devil. But listen to this. Yield to God. Because here's what we do sometimes. Well, God, I really want my way. You know, I really worked hard for that money. I work hard for my free time. I deserve. Stop right there. I deserve hell. I deserve eternity. If I spent every moment of my life working as hard as I could to please the Lord, I would still deserve eternal damnation. So the next time you start to think, I deserve, stop right there. Slow down. Let the Lord back in, right? Here, here's where it's really neat. You know what the Bible says? Receive, listen to this, the engrafted word. You want to, let me give you a synonym. Here's, here's the English lesson. Receive the merged word in your life. Have you ever thought about that? God's word should cause us to pause and say, let me inject that into my mindset. Let me inject that into my behavior. Let me inject that into what comes out of my mouth. That's yielding to the Lord. Resist the devil, and he will flee. Right? You, if you, I'm telling you the truth. I'm probably telling you too much, honestly. I know I am. I always do. I shouldn't even say that anymore. Just assume if my mouth's open, I'm telling you more than I should tell you. But the reality is, there's a good feeling when you're right up on that bumper of the next person, and you see the brake lights of the person that's been trying to merge when they shouldn't have. Right? How many you felt that before. Don't leave me hanging. How many of you have done that before, and you realize... I was successful in resisting the merge, right? That's a good feeling, isn't it, right? Let me tell you how much better it is when you resist the devil and realize he had to leave you alone. That temptation that's been bugging you, that frustration that's been in your heart and in your life, that, that anxiety that you felt, and listen, <laughs> I think 99% of all Americans are feeling anxiety, whether it's related to COVID or work or finances or family problems or whatever it may be. We've all got some anxiety. But let me tell you something. When you resist the devil and say, listen, you can do what you want. Remember how Job said it? Take away everything. But as long as I've got God, I'm going to keep on marching forward. Resist the devil. Get right on God's bumper. Right? Here's what I'm asking you to do, folks. If you will lean on Christ, right? Remember, I've told you before, I'm not good, right? If you see me in my normal habitat, right? My natural, fleshly ideas, I'm not nice, 
I'm not patient. I'm not kind. Uh, you know what, Miss Janet's looking because she's been with, a, with me at a basketball game. She's seen it. Referees, it's like red to a bull with me. If I see stripes, I struggle. And she knows it. Wayne does too. He's just nicer. He wouldn't tell on me. <laughs> She's, she's nice, too. I'm sorry. I shouldn't say Miss Janet's not nice. But she knows I have flesh, too. Right? If you've ridden with me at that merge spot, just ask Lily. You know, I shouldn't tell you. Don't ask Lily. Do not ask my kids anything about my driving. I don't want you to do that. But if you were to ask her, she'd tell you, I have some flesh, too. But you know what I've got to do? Hide behind Jesus. Right? And this table's too small to hide me, but Jesus is not. And if I get right on his bumper, right? If I, if I yield to him and stay close to him and resist the devil, all of this, it's temporary. Right? Some of you may say, Pastor, you just lost your mom. You just, you had a crazy week. How in the world can you say that we're supposed to walk in faith with God? Because you know what? Death is temporary. I preached my mother's funeral a week ago yesterday. No, was it? Yeah, a week ago yesterday. Do you know what the main point was? There is a hope of a henceforth. My life doesn't end when mine does, right? My world doesn't stop when my heart stops beating. Her eternity didn't stop two weeks ago. She just stepped into a new realm. And here's what I want you to understand. When we have that perspective, good luck stopping us, Satan. We can resist you. All you can do is make my bank account go down. I got Jesus. He's taking care of me for eternity. All you can do is make me sick. Forget about it. I got Jesus. He's taking care of me. All you can do is threaten me with death. All right, sure, I'll go to heaven. Think about it, folks. God has you covered. He does. And he wants you to be all in. He wants to be all in. I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm dangerously close into turning this one into a three-part series instead of one sermon. This is part two. We're probably still going to be here next week as I look down at how many points I still have on my paper. So I'll tell you once again, be thankful for 30-something Pastor John instead of 20-something Pastor John. Because 20-something Pastor John would have said, I can talk fast. Let's do this. But we're going to wrap up in the next couple points here. Resist the devil. Submit to God. It says once again, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. You know, that bumper illustration, I hope that you're getting that. If you'll work together with God to resist what the devil's trying to, uh, trying to do, the devil's plans have no chance. Right? In fact, the devil's plans will result in God's glory if you'll work with God. Here's how the Bible says it. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. Right? And if you don't know that context, if you don't know what I'm talking about, that is Joseph as his brothers have sold him into slavery and now they come back around years later and didn't even recognize him and he's able to bless his family because of God's plan in his life. Was every step of the way good for Joseph? He didn't enjoy it, right? As he's sitting in prison for things he didn't do, and he stays in prison because friends that he helped didn't help him back. He didn't enjoy that. But there, years later, he can look back and say, God meant for good what you meant for evil. Folks, let me tell you something. I'm, I'm praying that all of us can look back on 2020 and say, <clears throat> Devil, you meant it for evil. You, you tried real hard. You fought us. We had to close down church for a while. We had to change the way we did things. It was scary and frustrating, and we didn't know what was going to be next. But what you meant for evil, God meant for good. And we're going to keep on walking in his glory and what he's called us to do. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. God, I thank you so much for loving us. I thank you for saving us. God, and I thank you that you have a purpose and a plan for everything that happens in our lives. God, I thank you that you've never wasted a tear. You've never wasted one moment of, of fear. You've never wasted one moment of pain in our lives, God, that you use them for your glory if we will submit to you. 
God, I pray that you would help us all to yield to you in your direction in our lives, God, in your work in our lives, God, in your intercession in our lives, God. I pray that we would help us to resist the devil in everything that we do, to not let him come in through sin and through gossip and through frustration and through anxiety and depression, but rather, God, we would cling to you, God, that we would draw near to you and know that you will draw near to us. God, help us to walk with you. Help us to stay close to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pastor Jared, you got to, oh man, he, he's sneaky. He was just back there. I looked at him before. Sorry, I'll get out of your way. They, they, trained, they trained pastors in Bible college to use prayer time as the time to move around the, the auditorium. <laughs> no, not really, but that's, that's what we do sometimes <laughs> uh, for, to, to transition. But hey, so a uh, reminder again, Samaritan's Purse, Operations Christmas Child, grab a box back there, take it home. This week, fill it with some goodies, um, not, not to eat, not edible goodies, but like some gifts and, and toys and whatnot. Instructions are all in there, but you can always uh, call the church or, uh, or talk to me after the service if you have any questions about that. Remember, bring it back next week. So there's 25 boxes here, and uh, we certainly appreciate you doing that. I'm going to uh, probably grab one or two and challenge our teenagers to also go and, and get some things from the dollar store this week and to bring it back next week so our youth group will also be participating in that. So tonight, um, here's just a couple other announcements. Tonight at the Y at 6 o'clock is our service going on there with our children's ministry and our teenagers are going bowling tonight as a, as a special activity that we're doing. So our bulletin says it's at 515, but I found out there's a discounted rate starting at 6 for bowling and it's going to save these young guys and girls uh, quite a bit of money. Uh, per game. So we're going to do a couple games and it's just going to be $10 to go for the um, hour or so that we're going to be there. So 6 o'clock tonight at Gulfgate Lanes is where we'll be um, for youth. I um, want to also uh, bring up the Widows and Widowers Banquet that our uh, deacons will be putting on on December 7th. The information is in your bulletin. It's at 6.30 p.m. at Dear Dutchman. Uh, listen, that applies not just to those who attend our church every week or who are members of our church, but literally if you've got neighbors, if you've got friends or family members that you know would, would love to be blessed and served by, uh, in, by this opportunity, um, it's a special time to get together at Dear Dutchman um, uh, on December 7th. There is a sign-up sheet in the back, so if you are here and that applies to you or you know there's somebody that will definitely um, participate, uh, you can start signing up uh, for, for that uh, dinner that we're going to be doing. And also we want to be able to give you a ride, if, if, if especially if a ride is needed or if it would make it easier um, traveling at nighttime or whatever to travel in, in a group. Um, so we're coordinating that so you can circle yes or no whether, they, whether the person needs a ride and put your phone number on that, uh, on that sign-in sheet back there. I believe I have covered the announcements that we have. Check, 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 check. That looks like it is. Let me remind you about being faithful to give in the offering. We're not passing offering plates, and so we've kind of put a pause to that. But you'll see Brother Wayne and Brother Mike on your way out, whichever exit. You can grab an envelope in front. You can slip, uh, slip your, 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 your money or your check in there and drop it in the basket on your way out. Or you could also take advantage of our online giving opportunity. It's osprey.church forward slash give. And you can give through regular general offering there. You can also designate giving uh, both online or using the envelope. So thank you for being faithful to give. And thank you for uh, being at the services. We hope you've received a blessing for being here. You guys have a great week. We'll see you later. God bless.